These days, we talk a lot about consent, yet it's still hazy for some people, despite its importance. So let's talk about consent and how that relates to children. First off, consent basically means permission. You wouldn't take someone's car without permission, so you don't touch anyone without their explicit permission. Often, we talk about consent in relation to sexual activities, but it really includes everything, including platonic, you know, hugging and kissing. So you can start teaching children about consent long before you have to talk to them about sex. Practicing consent in your household basically means just allowing people to have the right to decide what happens to their body. I mean, growing up, how many of you were forced to hug or kiss someone because it was expected of you? I mean, it's common for adults to ask children for a hug or kiss, even if it's against their wishes. So it's okay to ask your child to clean their room because of that mysterious funk, but when it comes to something that should be pleasurable, like a hug or kiss, we often, you know, expect them to do that for their relatives or whoever because it's the polite thing to do. So even if it's just an innocent hug, we're teaching children that adults have the right to touch them at any point for their own pleasure and against their wishes. Clearly, this is not laying the groundwork for healthy touch and relationships down the road, and it also makes them vulnerable to adult predators. So even when we're young, we should have the right to say no to unwanted touches. Obviously, there are a few exceptions, like medical care, but hugs and kisses, which are something that should be pleasurable, have no right to be forced on anyone, whether they're 4 or 24. Instead, we should allow children and youth to set boundaries about their bodies. So some relatives may get upset if there's no goodbye hug, but it's far more important to teach your child that they have the right to say no or yes to a hug. And if any of your relatives do protest, you can just say that you're teaching your children about boundaries and consent. Work with your child and help them understand that parts of their bodies are private, like their penis and their vulva, and no one should touch them ever. But be prepared for them to think in black and white that no one should ever touch them. So there may be a few examples that you can explain to the child, like a doctor may have to examine them if, you know, there's something wrong with them. It's also important to explain the difference between private and secret. A secret is something that's fun, like a secret birth or a surprise birthday party. Private just means that some things like bodily functions are best left to private times with a trusted adult, like bedtime. Another way to offer your child education and consent is to respect their privacy appropriately and according to their developmental or level or age. So perhaps that means you knock before you enter their bedroom. Or perhaps that means you allow them to gently clean their penis or vulva during bath time if they have the motor skills to do that. You can also set your own personal boundaries by modeling them. You know, perhaps you ask your family to knock before they come into the bathroom when you're taking a shower. Kids are like sponges and for better or worse, they're gonna do exactly what you do. So you can use this to your advantage by indirectly teaching them about boundaries and consent. Everyone should know how to ask for consent. So often this involves reading body language, which may be more difficult for small children or folks with cognitive disabilities. So you may have to explicitly instruct them in some of these things. And don't be afraid to spell things out and repeat over and over again. Prompt your kids to recognize when someone might be uncomfortable with touch. Kids love to role play, so show them how someone might react if they have a touch that they don't like, and then have the children act it out. And remind children to ask permission before they touch another person. So while it's very cute to have a two-year-old running around hugging everyone, it may not be so cute when your child is 12 or 22. So again, model this behavior and ask your child, would you like a hug today? Consent doesn't have to be framed around sex. Instead, it's just a philosophy and a way of life, a way of respecting people's boundaries about their own bodies. It may seem like a big job, but these small activities can help children learn about consent, about giving it and receiving it. So to summarize, teach children consent by respecting their right to say no to hugs and kisses, by modeling setting your own boundaries, learning body language that indicates consent is not given, and helping children learn how to ask for consent. So together we can make consent a regular part of a child's routine and philosophy for how we live and respect each other.